Mayong gabi, Pilipinas, and we welcome you to your continuing coverage of the 2022 OK Bet Maharlika Pilipinas Basketball League, ang Liga ng Bawat Pilipino. We are down to our last game here in General Santos City as Erika Cunha and the Bahor City Strikers took for back-to-back -back wins against the homegrown Gerald Anderson and the rest of the Jensen Warriors. Jensen surviving in a nail-biter last night against Bacolod. While the Bacor City Strikers able to outlast the Kansas City MG cars. These two teams looking for back-to-back -back victories here in our MBBL season. As we thank you for joining us. Mix Gomez at your service alongside Javi Balanya. Javi, I want to talk about Jensen. Nakita natin yung uh, nail biters I said against Bacolod last night. What impressed you the most about how they showed or how they played in that game? It was a total team effort galing sa kanila. Nakita mo na kung sino man ilagay nila sa floor, parehong effort ang binibigay nila. Mimicking itong uh, success na ginagawa ng Nueva Ecija Rice Vanguard. And that is the mark of a great team when everybody you put on the floor puts in the right amount of effort on both ends of the basketball floor. At, at dahil sa effort na yan, six straight wins na po ang Jensen Warriors tying Pampanga for the second hottest streak right now here in the MPBL. And now let's say hi to our courts at reporter na si Sheila Salaysay. Sheila, second day here in Jensen. Kamusta ka naman? Okay naman, Mix. Nakatikim na ako ng mga legit na pagkain dito. Magandang gabi sa lahat ng mga nananood via Facebook Live at syempre dito sa ating venue. Maganda rin ang simula ng ating dalawang teams kasi naiuwi nilang panalo on their first night dito sa Jensen. Pero the question is, will Bacoor continue to strike to end the winning streak of Jensen? Or will Jensen be continued to brave to defend their home court? Kaya naman, ayaw palabiya ang mga dula diri sa Lagao Gym and I invite everyone today is our last day. Punta na kayo at supportahan itong mga teams tonight. Make sense, Abby? Beautifully said by the beautiful Miss Sheila Salaysay. Thank you, Sheila. All right, so having a we have to take a look at our team standings, our South Division more specifically, kung saan nandoon ang Jensen and Bacoor. Oh, Jensen moving up into that number four spot. They're tied with Rizal at 10 and 5 right now, but they have the second longest winning, 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 winning streak here sa ating season at six games already. Bacoor, they're a number seven, but they're still in a good position to be able to catch up with these teams at the four, five, and six spots, but they have to start getting those victories right here, right now. Just a couple of games left for the Bacoor. City Strikers to try to bounce back and even steal home court advantage. But you can see, Seeds number three all the way to number six. All of them have 10 wins to their name. And how important is that? Seeds number three and four will have home court advantage eventually in our MPBL playoffs. Now let's talk about the Bacoor City Strikers. In their previous game against Quezon City, it was a night of magic bunots para kay Coach Willie Generalao, Rocky Asidre. Paulo Castro coming alive, RJ Ramirez as well, but it was Eric Acuna leading the way and they won by a total of 29 points. Yeah, that's right. Makes well, you know, the score cannot really justify the competitive game that it was in the first three quarters. Kayala Quezon City just really faltered in that final frame where they were outscored 36 to 19 by the Bacor City Strikers. RJ Ramirez came alive for that in that final frame. And as you said, night na magic bunats para kay Coach Willie. But this guy, Eric Acuna, was really the one who performed well enough the whole game, was brilliant, setting up the show para sa kanya mga teammates. 13 assists make very impressive performance. And those 13 assists translate into a 19-point win for the Bahor City Strikers. A close game for the first three quarters and then they pulled away in the fourth quarter. Now let's talk about the Jensen Warriors against the Bacolod Bingo Plus. That game was neck and neck all the way. What a... What an exciting matchup it was. Chris Masaglang led the way as one of the homegrowns para sa Jensen Warriors. I mentioned Nihavi, the battle inside, all the physicality in the world involving Marky and the big men of the Jensen Warriors. At, uh, it was actually Marlon Gomez, who you just saw on your screen, one of those guys who catapulted Jensen, especially in the fourth frame. Yeah, Bacolod, they gave up a really good fight. Kaya lang, Jensen was just really too deep. You saw there Don Reverente, he was hitting three-point shots. And we were talking to Coach Marlon earlier. Nahirapan siya na ilabas si Don Reverente at times kasi pumapasok yung mga three-point shot niya. And here are the numbers on your screen in that game. Bacolod dominated the free throw department 26 to 33. That is why they were able to stay in the game. But the bench points, sabi nga natin kanina, we pointed it out. The total team effort para dito sa Jensen Warriors, which was a big factor in them gaining victory number 10 in that game against the Bacolod Bingo Plus. Even with Mark Cruz struggling, shooting from the field, 0 out of 7. Guys like Nico Elorde, Elvin Chan, Marlon Gomez coming off the bench, all stepping up para kay Coach Marlon Martin. 
But uh, it was Chris Masaglang who led the way as one of the homegrowns. He mentioned that 13 points, 5 rebounds as well for him. At naramdaman natin kagabi, Happy, just how passionate this crowd was, especially for their homegrowns. Yeah, that's right. And you know, he almost did not miss from the field yesterday up to his final two attempts. He thought he was going to have a perfect night. It was already going to be a Cinderella story para sa kanya. But uh, great win once again para dito sa Jensen Warriors. Let's see if they could sustain and remain perfect on their home court tonight. All right, so now let's turn you over to Richard Tapos, our arena announcer. This is gonna be exciting Tuna City Happy 24 Tuna Festival Welcome to our main game Baoor versus your Jensen Warriors On the OK Bet Benny Pacquiao's MPBL 4th season Presented by Extreme Let's make way for the starting lineups Beginning with Baoor City Strikers at forward number 55, Jay Ham, John Hamon. Starting at guard number 21, RJ Ramirez. Playing center number 17, King Destacamento. One guard number 12, Eric Acuna. Power forward number 10, Mark Montuano. Bahor City Strikers is led by Willie Hederanao. Assistant coaches Adrian Morande, Marlo Corpin, Skyscraper, Marlo Aguino, Ale Patrimonio, Jude Prodigalidad, and Peter Segundo, team manager and co team owner, Dennis Abelia, assistant team manager, Paul San Jose, coaching consultant, Brian Agaros, team owners, Jay Cabal Rebilla, and Bahor City, Honorable Mayor Strike Rebilla. The starting five for your Jensen Warriors. Okay, Ben. Playing center number 45, Marlon Gomez. Small forward number 18, Nico Palaniban. Power forward number 13, Dr. Ply, Don Reverente. Point guard number nine, the Ant-Man, Mark Cruz. Shooting guard number three, from Barangay Labangan, Matt TV Idol, Gerald Anderson. Jensen Warriors hockey band head coach is Marlon King Martin. His assistants are Big Escudero, Noy Pito, Al Vergara, Joel Gragasi, Adrian Pual, and Peter Deleguero, team manager Merman Flores. Your starters for Bahoor versus Jensen, Eric Acuna, RJ Ramirez, King de Sacramento in his second start because of that injury to Lester Reyes, Mark Montuano, and Jan Hamon, who is facing his former coach Marlon Martin. And then on the other end, it's Mark Cruz, Marlon Gomez, Don Reverente, Nico Panganiban, and the homegrown Gerald Anderson as we welcome you to your last game here in General Santos City. Mix Gomez had your service alongside Javi Palanya and Sheila Salaisai. Now, Javi, I want to begin things with Jan Hamon. Now, Mark Pangilina has been struggling for the Bohor City Strikers. He only made three three-point shots in the past three games, which is uh, very uncharacteristic for him because that is his average per game. Now, Janamon getting another start. How does it usually feel? What's the challenge for you to go up against a former coach of yours? Well, you know, for you, that's just added motivation para sa uh, yung, uh, laro ngayon day na to. But definitely, that's just another day in the office para kay Jan Hamon. Great players, they don't even think about it and I'm sure he won't even say it and he'll downplay it at most. Pero, minsan nasa likod yun ang mga isip ng mga player when you're going up against your former coach. But then again, like I said kanina, just another day in the office para sa kanya. Turnover right here para sa Bahor City Strikers. Jan Hamon actually had an offer as well to play for the Jensen Warriors, but he had to select Bahor because it was closer to his home. He had to think for his family as well. And we, of course, give a shout out to Riza Pajardo, his wife, and their children. Jan Hamon right now defending Nico Panganiban on the other end. Jensen 
with Mark Cruz attempting that shot. That guy looking good. He struggled yesterday, zero out of seven from the field because his uh, right finger, your middle finger, was injured. But it looks to be looking good right now at the start of this game as he hit that jumper. He had 29 points in their game previous to yesterday. So he can explode at any time at si Mark Cruz. It is Malaki John Habon. Jensen currently with the lead. Nico Panganiban tried to find Don Reverente. Tapped away. And here's Martin Gomez. Gomez came off the bench last night. Turnover for him. Numbers for Bahor. There's a foul at the fast break committed by Mark Cruz. Yesterday, yes, it was Hafer Mondragon who started at that five position para kay Coach Marlon Martin. But in today's game, they anticipated that King Destacamento will be the starting center para sa Bacor City Strikers. And right away, they want to establish that inside presence. Therefore, putting in itong si Marlon inside the game to start that center. Marlon Gomez had nine points, 13 rebounds and five assists last night coming off the bench. Bahor sticking, still looking for their first points in the ball game. Ramirez will miss. Rebound Mark Cruz. Stingy defense to start for the Jensen Warriors. Panganiban will fire. This guy started this season. We talked about him. Hindi gano kaganda kanyang shooting performance. But right now, looking very comfortable with Jensen. Now one of their go-to shooters. And we were all talking to Coach Marlon earlier today in the morning. And he said that... He, Wala naman talaga siya masyadong shooting before but because he works on it day in and day out in practice hinahayaan niya to take those shots as Gerald Anderson gets his first two points here in this game. And that's gonna get the crowd going. Gerald Anderson last night scored three points. This time he follows that three-point shot of Nico Panganiban. Panganiban had 16 in their previous outing and there's that fast break layup of Gerald Anderson that uh, will definitely get the crowd going. And this crowd has been pumped up since last night because their homegrowns have been producing. It began with Christmas Aglang. Now, Gerald Anderson getting the start as this free throw is brought to you by Extreme Appliances, ang subok at kompleto ng appliance brand ng Pilipinas. Uh, early substitution here. Coach William and allow subbing RJ Ramirez out of the game and inserting JR Gallit. RJ has missed uh, some defensive assignments to begin this game, and that's why the entry para dito kay Galit. And JR Gallit is a very stable player para sa Bahor City Strikers. We always talk about how underrated he is. There's a tap by King Destacamento for the putback. That's a legal play for those who are wondering. In FIBA basketball, once that ball goes out of that cylinder, you can always tap it in even if it's not up above. That's the first field goal for Bahor in this game. Panganiban will miss. He is the next big thing. And he would even get comparisons. This si Nico, Nico Panganiban to a Scotty Thompson. That, that was really an amazing a remark that they made and the only thing that they have left from Nico Panganiban is the passing ability that Scotty Thompson possesses. Right now, Nico Panganiban and the Jensen Warriors are looking good. They have an early 7-point lead, 6 minutes and 44 in the opening frame. Parinay nakatutok dito sa OK Bet Maharlika Pilipinas Basketball League Live in Lagao Jim Jensen Bacola the Jensen wins last night is now tied with Pampanga for the longest winning streak dito sa ating liga. The Warriors business is not yet finished according to coach Marlon Martin 
he also said there was a revelation in their game last night. Don Reverente and Marlon Gomez, their big men, Kumo Conecta, they will display the same execution and effort for tonight. And Coach Marlon is happy. His guys are confident sa kanilang teammates. Nakikita ang strength ng isa't isa. Ang, palala, ang paalala lang niya, huwag baliwalain ng Bacoor as their aggressiveness from last night's win ay siguradong daladala nila sa larong ito. Thanks and Javi. Thank you, Sheila. Javi, how important is it for Don Reverente and Marlon Gomez to start making shots as Mark Pangilinan finally breaks his shooting spell. Oh, what a time for him to come. Ito si Mark Pangilinan getting that three-point basket. But going back to your question, Mix, in this day and age, sobrang importante when your big men are able to hit from the outside. It gives you another dimension sa yung laro. And I'm sure the Jensen Warriors at this point, siyempre they're winning a lot of games. It when you are winning a lot of games, you've got to find new ways for you to reinvent yourself. And this is exactly what is happening when Reverente and Marlon Gomez are hitting from the outside. The Jets and Warriors slowly shaping up to be one of the contenders here in the MPBL. Ten wins, five losses, six, six straight victories for the Warriors. As Pangilinan misses, Mark Cruz with the board. Cruz already has two made field goals in this match after Shooting the ball 0 out of 7 last night. Mark Cruz again. No good. Rebound Reverente. And he's blocked by the Sacramento. The other end, Pangilinan. Looking very aggressive. The Sacramento on the fake. This guy played very well yesterday. Just couldn't get that layup to go. The other end we go. Nico Pangaliban for 2. I think I've said this a couple of times yesterday, I'll say it again. The speed of Nico Panganiban is very underrated, but what a pass that was by Mark Cruz for the easy two points. 16 points, five rebounds, three assists, three three-point shots last night for Nico Panganiban. He was the leading scorer for the Jets and Warriors. And let's bring that comparison back. Nico Panganiban to Scotty Thompson. Your thoughts? He has the athleticism. He has the build, he has the height. He can shoot from the outside now, now that Scotty Thompson is also getting shots from the outside. Oh, but they are got it here, getting a knock on play underneath. But going back to what I was saying, only a matter of time before he matches who Scotty Thompson is as a player. But I'm not saying that they are, you know, super the same. Of course, Nico Panganiban will carve out a name for himself individually, and he will be separated from that comparison but right now that is something of a compliment para sa kanya obviously a long way to go but again he's 23 years old nowhere to go but up para kay Nico Panganiban and then the other end nowhere to go but two points para kay JR Gallet as he was able to escape the defense our score is 15 to 7 here in the opening quarter 4 minutes 25 remaining Gallet early substitution for Bacoor and it's worth it for the strikers second straight basket para sa kanya he could hit that perimeter jump shot from time to time what a feed that was by Ian Melencio who just checked into the game joining them are Lander Cannon Mark Panginan and Mark Montuano Gerard Anderson pass that's too low para kay Marlon Gomez Now we welcome in Chris Masaglang, the second homegrown for Jensen, fielded in as we take a look at that jump shot by J.R. Gallet. Again, Chris Masaglang, last night, 13 points, 5 rebounds, 6 out of 8 from the field. He actually missed his last two shots, so before that, he was perfect, 6 out of 6. Melenso on the fade, that's good. By Ian Melencio, one of the best scoring point guards here in the MPBL. Look at this move. Blowing by Mark Cruz, creating separation with that step back and all net on that jumper. Beautiful play right there made by Ian. Ian Melencio only had three points last night. Could be very big tonight. He cuts the lead down to four.
Let's talk about the numbers for Bacoor and Jensen. Jensen, the better scoring team here compared to Bacoor. 80.6 compared to 76. Point nine, but both teams really doing well on the defensive end of the basketball. 73.8 points allowed and almost 73. Also, para dito sa Jensen Warriors, both teams really able to pass the rock well. Their 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 squads that trust their teammates a lot to run the floor para sa kanila, and that is the reason why they have been winning ball games recently. And good for them to trust their teammates because these are deep teams roster-wise. Anderson losing time on the drive. Short rebound Gomez. Pass inside. Reverse layup is good for Gerald Anderson. We were talking about the work ethic of this guy. Na minsan niya hindi makatao yung ginagawa niya. He doesn't get tired out. Ayon dito ang coach Marlon Martin. But the dedication is definitely showing in his performances when he is on the floor. Gerald Anderson, even though he has tapings, he would continue to practice. Some of the reserves of Jensen are locked in with him <laughs> so they can train alongside Gerald as Mark Cruz escapes the defense and scores for two. Uh, Bacor having a tough time off of that handoff pass and Mark Cruz breaking away. The strikers will have to do a better job of hedging on to those guards and stopping them from getting into the lane. Montuano, short, rebound got it. That's what he can do for Bacoor, but a sorry miss on the putback. It's also great to see Miguel Sorella check in for the first time as he did not see action yesterday. Mark Cruz, red hot in his second day here in Jensen. Nine points now in the game para sa kanya. Looks like that finger not bothering him one bit here. I actually asked him this morning, Kamusta pa kay Ramdam? Sabi niya, medyo masakit pa rin. Then I asked him, Dahil ba dyan? Papasa mo lagi yung bola? Sabi niya na sa akin, No, I will continue to shoot. And here he is, shooting and making baskets. Nine points early in this match as this three-point shot is brought to you by Extreme One Stop Shop Appliances. Mark Cruz, you can argue, he's playing with four fingers on his right hand. Well on pace to surpass that 29-point output that he had a couple of games back. Jerry Pingoy now into the ball game para kay Coach Marlon Martin. Did not see action yesterday. Let's see if he can make an impact in this one against the Bacoor Strikers. Pingoy, he has put in the extra work as Mark Montuano backs it in. Oh, that guy, I'm sure, puts in the extra work every time. Montuano, that is his shot, backing it off the glass on that occasion. Bigoy, Kinapalabas, Chris Masagla. Ball screen, Masagla. Needs a teammate, Sorella with a fade. That's his first two points here in Jensen. Beautiful, patient execution by the Warriors right there. Off of the pick and roll. The roll by Sorella, fading away to create that space and the shot. 24 13, Lander Cannon on the other end, losing space. That's a turnover. Well, Cannon has been effective here para dito kay Coach Willie General recently, especially with the absence of Lester Reyes. But look at that, there's the pass. Pasaglang to Sorella. Did not score yesterday, ito si Nicole, but getting two points in the early goings of our match here. Nicole Sorella losing that basketball as Ian Melencio steals it away. Melencio looking very aggressive at the start of this game. He only had one field goal at them last night. But we all know the capabilities of the Tony Ian Melencio. Actually, also one of our more underrated defensive guards here right. in the league. He can really be pesky and make it hard for you in the backcourt. Montuano on to Ian. Good matchup against Masagla. Shot clock reading 14. Tapped away. Recovered by Montuano. Melencio has 10 seconds. Ian, fade away, that's good. There you go, that's what he can give you. When you have nowhere to go on your offensive patterns, you give the ball to Ian Melencio, he will make something happen. Ian Melencio, one of the more famous guys in Cavite. Travel. travel against Maharito. That's right, a homegrown player to see Ian Melencio, and uh, rightfully playing para dito sa Bacor City Strikers. Well, look at that half spin in the fade, Kobe-esque, right? Ian Melencio returning for the Bacoor City Strikers after starting with Imos in this season. 
He was already part of Bacor in that 2019 run where they reached the second round of the playoffs as J.R. Gallet gets the foul. He will go to the line for two. Oh, that sequence looked to be going nowhere para dito sa Bacor City Strikers. In fact, Mark Mangelino was frustrated that he did not receive the pass on that right flank. Gallet forcing the issue, took to his strong side and was able to draw the foul. It's interesting how this rotation is going to be for Coach Willie Henerolao. Because usually, Jerry Gallet is one of the last ones to come off the bench. Exactly. Dave Moralde not yet seeing action here. Rocky Asidre, who had a stellar game yesterday, also not on the floor yet. But we're just in the first quarter, mix. And remember, Magic Bunot night. That was last night for Bacoor. Six points now for J.R. Gallet. He trims the lead down to seven. Nine seconds to go. Oh, there's that defense by Melencio. Ian escaping the defense of Jerry Pingoy. Down to one second and a turnover. So it will be a sideline inbound for the last possession belonging to Bacoor. That is not something you see every day. Garendito kay Jerry Pingoy. Usually a very steady ball handler. Someone who is able to take care of the basketball. Those mistakes are really very uncharacteristic. So Jensen will now try to get one last stop with 0.3 seconds to go. Referees will be reviewing the time. But we were just talking about the defensive prowess of Ian Melencio. There you see it, right on point. Really was able to pressure the, the, the offense and get that ball from Jerry Pingoy, but that was very careless of him. I'm sure something he won't repeat or want to repeat in this game. He got playing time ahead of the usual second stringer that was Nico Elorde. Elorde did see a lot of minutes last night. 22 in total as Pingoy rested. Now let's listen to Richard Tampos for the official time. Currently resetting it. One second to go. Still a lot of time for a catch and shoot here. Baseline inbound. Very dangerous here for Bahor. Pangilina catch and fire. There's a foul. Very unfortunate sequence for the Jensen Warriors who already had control here in this first frame. Now Bahor has a chance to trim the lead down to three. Oh, you know, Bacoor coming off that win yesterday, you could expect them. Their confidence is on a sky high right now. And they will not allow themselves to buckle down just like that in the early goings of our match here. So, really, they're exerting the effort, especially on the defensive end, where they started out flat, which prompted some substitutions by Coach Willie General Lau. Take a look at that replay. The foul will be called against Nicole Sorella on the closeout. Is that obvious, Javi? I think our referees are pointing out to the body contact that happened after the shot was made. Sorella, from that angle, looked to hit the lower part of the back ni Tony Mark Pangilinan. But uh, medyo inconclusive pa rin from that angle. So let's see how our referees will decide on this. They're still at the replay station right now. This will be very crucial for Bacoor as they try to gain momentum entering the second frame you mentioned the confidence building up after that win last night snapping their three game losing skid now the call is made let's listen in to richard tampos All right. Foul number 17, Mike Sorella. That's his third. And the line shooting to Mark Pangilina. So one unfortunate thing as well para sa Jensen. It's three fouls for Miguel Sorella early in this game. Pangilina making the first free throw. We'd actually like to greet him. Happy, happy anniversary. Pati ang kanyang asawa na si Laida. Pangilina dedicating this game for his family, of course. Remember, this guy has struggled the past couple of games in terms of his three-point shooting, but he is one of the top gunners in the league. 
and ultimately he seems to lead down to three points. The score after one is 24 to 21. Yeah, never look at the numbers when you're a shooter like Mark Pangilinan because that law, those law of averages will definitely catch up on you. And if you keep shooting that, it will definitely fall eventually. Kesa naman na hindi ka tumira at all. And the same rule applied to Mark Cruz, who caught fire with nine points in the opening frame. Jared Anderson with two baskets as well off of some layups. Jensen taking control for most of the first, but Bakoor with a late run as they trim the lead down to three. Sir Abit Pistanio at the sidelines enjoying the action here in General Santos City. First time that we come to you live from the Tuna capital of the Philippines, but this is day number two here in Jensen. As you get to see our VIPs, Emer Oreta, Kenneth Turemdes, Rudy Distrito, our uh, head of basketball operations, commissioner, and head of security, respectively. As we thank you for joining us, Migs Gomez at your service alongside Javi Palanya and Sheila Salaysay. Bahor currently down by three points. And they begin the second frame with Ian Melenzo, Mark Montuano, Lander Cannon, Mark Panginan, and J.R. Gallet. Having our first quarter field goal shooting. 62% para dito sa Jensen Warriors and only 42 for Bahor in that first frame. But the defense by the strikers able to bring them back into this one. Actually, the Warriors were shooting above 62% in that game. Uh, the defense just stepping up para dito sa white shirts in that latter part of the first quarter. Foul here. That's against Jerry Pingoy. Or was that JP Belenchon? It was Belenchon. Paso Tito, Edsel Magisa. Take a look at what happened. Moving screen right there by JP Pelinson. Not really sure what happened as that was out of the screen. Nevertheless, ball is with Pacoor. They go to Magisa. Certainly has that ability to score at the post, but he's called for a walk. Good defense right there by Fajarito right away creating an impact para sa kanyang kupunan. We talked about how good his improvement was especially in yesterday's game as their turnover story is on your screens. 8-4 to four, by big reason why Jensen relinquished that huge lead that they have before creating 12 points off of those 10 turnovers of the Warriors. Christian Barito oh, making a 3-point shot. Chila mentioned that the three-point shooting of Don Reverente and Marlon Gomez were useful last night. How about Christian Parico, uh, Parito as well? That's going to be more of a pain para dito sa Bacor to, to solve in this game when you have all Jensen Warrior big men shooting that basketball from three-point country. And Christian Parito's former senior in FEU. Javi Palanya is very proud of him as well. How about your teammates, Joel Liu and Christian Pajarito? Shooting it very well here in the MPBL. I couldn't be prouder, of course, seeing their growth from the time where we were in high school all the way now. Na pros na sila dito sa MPBL. Just brings me a lot of joy watching them play like that. Saw the block as well from Edsel Magisa. Baseline inbound now. Here's John Orbeta on to JP Belenchon. Great to see John Orbeta back in action as well. One of the main stays for Jensen, and he lays it in for two. Glad to see him also attacking the hole. Decided to put the ball on the floor and went for that stretch. You mentioned makes one of the more explosive players that we have here in the MPBL. That guy was a consistent scorer for the Warriors coming from the previous seasons as well. 
Mag-isaw will miss on the layup. Ball tapped away in favor of Bacoor. Oh, Masaglan decided not to attempt to save that basketball because he thought that ball was going to them. Here's that drive by J.O. John Orbeta over the two Bacoor defenders in Canon and Mag-isa. Elvin Chan, the cannonball as mentioned by Richard Tapos, checking in for the first time. He was a crowd favorite instantly yesterday as he scored five points off the bench. 29-21, four on the shot clock. Edgel Magisa losing that basketball and it's recovered by Jensen. Here's Nico Elorde. Forward pass, Bill and Sean. On to Orbeta. Paritos asking for it. He has There's a height advantage. Yeah. Belenchon will fire. Short. Rebound, Stevens. Andretti Stevens. Oh, pass went straight to Elvin Chan. Dangerous situation. Nico Elorde on the 1 2. And he will proceed to the line. Aggressiveness on full display on both ends of the basketball. Para dito sa Jensen Warriors. Getting the steal after that missed three point shot by Belenchon and Nico Elorde. Refusing to wait for backup, took it upon himself, went for that sidestep, and was fouled. This free throw is brought to you by Extreme Appliances, ang subok at kompletong appliance brand ng Pilipinas. Nico Elorde, one of the guys at the top of the league in terms of fouls received per ball game. It's him and Kit Jimenez batting it out one and two in terms of most fouls absorbed. Second free throw is good. As we turn you over to Sheila Salaysay. Ang laro ng strikers kagabi ay patunay lang na kaya nilang manalo sa closeout games. They did not leave anything to chance against Quezon City. Banggit ni Coach Willie, his men responded well. Marami na silang natutunan sa mga talo nila. Kaya hindi masasabing chamba ang panalo nila kagabi. It's all about hard work and collective effort. All 15 players in the roster were given playing time. That's why Coach Willie gives credit to his guys. And that's going to be the story for the strikers again tonight. And, and just as Sheila was reporting, Paulo Castro made a three-point shot, staying red hot here in Bacoor or in Jensen for Bacoor. Now Andretti Stevens colliding with JP Belenchon. How about Paulo Castro? Nakita mo mix ibang iba yung bitaw niya. That confidence really doing wonders for him. Obviously, that game yesterday was something of a catapult for him, giving him that moment to rise. With no hesitation for that three-point shot. Paulo Castro last night only played six minutes, but he scored ten points. Just that was how efficient he was in the third quarter and the start of the fourth para sa Bacoor. That was the second three-point shot for the strikers in this game. Contra sa tatlo ng Jensen as Nico Elorde makes a jump shot. Oh, you don't see that all the time. Nico Elorde trying to create separation and pulling up for the jump shot from that perimeter. But again, itong Bacoor City Strikers. Ito si Paulo Castro, nakita natin yesterday. Siya pa yung nag, uh, nag humingi ng substitution dito kay Coach Willie kasi hapungapu na siya in uh, the performance that he had in that third quarter. Hindi na siya nakabalik because of the stellar performance of RJ Ramirez in right. the final frame. Si RJ Ramirez naman yung naging spark plug or magic bullet as we should say in the fourth. 33-24. Here's Nico Elorde. Baharito, no good on the one-hander. Rebound, Magisa. And then Stevens looking ahead. Now, this is one of the guys who lost minutes with the additions of Ian Melencio, Dave Morade, and Jan Hamon. Shot clock reads 10. It's back with Andretti. Moralde with six seconds to go. Double screen. There's a foul. Yeah. Tap from behind right there. Galing dito kay Elvin Chan, I suppose. Taffer Mondragon checking in for the first time. That guy started last night for the Jensen Warriors. Joining him are JP Belanchon, John Orbeta, Elvin Chan, and Nico Elorde. Here's Castro. Will he stay aggressive after an air ball in his previous attempt? Moralde, reverse, no good. Chance for Jensen, Orbeta, down the middle. That's a blocking foul. 
Stevens called him on the side. That's a good call by our baseline referee. And I like seeing Paul, uh, John Urbeta really very confident in attacking that basket on the run, especially. We would like to take this time to send our prayers or thoughts to the family of John Urbeta. That's the reason why he was not able to play yesterday because his Lola passed away. But we are glad to see him play very aggressive in this game and saw some, some success scoring that basketball and obviously back in his good form offensively para sa Jensen Warriors. 33-24, 5 minutes and 33 remaining before halftime. I'm sure it was see John Orbeta dedicating his game to his grandmother who just passed away. Very aggressive here. And adding to that firepower of Jensen that we were talking about since last night. Oh, that ball is off of Adretti Stevens. So another chance here for the Warriors. This five on the floor keeping it on Bakor at bay. They were already within three points, Kanina. But went on an unanswered scoring run to be able to establish, re-establish this double digit advantage. Here's Nico Elorde. He struggled shooting last night. Giving it up to Mondragon. Happer will score. Another big man making it rain. Each of the big men of the Jensen Warriors have hit an outside shot from yesterday to today. Such a great sign for Coach Marlon Martin. Pagisa asking for that basketball. Instead, they go to Castro. Paolo will drive. He gets the foul, but that's on the floor. Oh, this game slowing down here in the second quarter. Physicality hiking up. There's that outside shot by Haffer Mondragon. He showed us that yesterday as well. Mondragon actually fouled out late in that game. One of the victims of Mark E in those fouls that he got, the numerous fouls that he got. Referee reviewing something here, 36-24. Foul called against John Orbeta. Balik dito, King Destacamento, the starting center for the Bacoor City Strikers, again getting minutes because of the loss of Lester Reyes, who had a calf injury that he suffered against Zamboanga. Good news is, it's only going to take weeks as for the oh, yung tansya, no, ng Bacoor City Strikers. And we hope for the best, para kay Lester Reyes. Always hate seeing go, someone go down with an injury, especially someone of great importance to a team's rotation. We wish Lester Reyes the best in his recovery. 36-24, here's JP Villanchon. On to Urbeta. Elvin Chan asking for it at the post. There he is. No call. There's the whistle blown by the referee at the last second. Andretti Stevens calling for an unspo. <laughs> Let's look at that again. There's a lot the of physicality. Bump. And the retaliation right there by Elvin Chan. You did mention the peskiness of Dave Moralde defensively last night on display in that play. Well, he is someone that is very brave. He will not back down. He has seen a lot of physicality throughout his career. I mean, playing for the San Beda Red Cubs in high school, moving on to the Red Lions for the first part of his college career and eventually to the Fighting Maroons where he finished. Charge against Elvin Chan. Isapayang palaban na manalaro para kay Coach Marlon Martin. One of his most entrusted players who transferred from Pasay. Castro on to Montuano at the corner. That's too strong. Tapped away. Good recognition by Destacamento. And here's Dave Borade who delivers from downtown. Might have had something to say to Elvin Chan after that shot as he walked by him on that attempt. Good plays on both ends of the floor. Para dito kay Dave Moralde. Elorde creating space. Nico leading in. He backs it in for two. Well, Elorde in this game has really been looking for his shot. And J.P. Villanson getting that steal and the foul. 
the guards of Bacoor very upset with that play. Well, on the other hand, the players of the Jensen Warriors very sharp on the defensive end, able to anticipate and play the passing lanes. Here's that up and under. Galing dito kay Nico Elordi, good defense but just better offense galing sa kanya. Nico Elordi, last night, 2 out of 13 from the field, 0 out of 5 from downtown. Only scored 5 points but off to a great start, already surpassing his output in the previous game. I'm sure he was very wary of that stat line yesterday, kaya ngayon talagang iniigihan niya yung pag-shoot ng bola. And I'm sure also very inspired by the presence of his family here in the venue. Right. Later on, maybe we're going to see Mitch Del Carmen once more. As Don Reverente checks back in for Jensen. It's still a 12 point lead for the home team. Eric Acuna, Babalik then. That guy had 11 points, 12, or make that 13 assists last night after only averaging two points per game in the season. But he is. One of the best passers in the league, number five at 5.9 per outing. Moralde against Elvin Chan for retribution. Too strong. No putback. And Chan gets the board, even though his hair went flying. He's gonna have to try to fix that. Just a headband. Orbeta. Baseline drive, kick out, Elvin Chan, catch and fire, bombs away! He was waiting for that basketball. He really wanted to get that shot off. Even if, he's already got his headband, he's <laughs> not hitting the ball. And he did that shotgun celebration straight to the commissioner of the MPBL, Kenneth Duremdes, who was also celebrating at the sideline as Destacamento absorbs the contact. Not a lot of players will have the gall to do that. <laughs> Make that shotgun to Captain Marbet himself. Look at that, three-point shot, hand up. Para dito kay Dave Moralde, but just too far to be able to force that shot into missing. <laughs> Elvin Chan. <laughs> this guy is something else. That's why he is an instant crowd favorite, even though he's not a homegrown here in Jensen. He's just a guy who knows what he can give sa kanyang koponan and is never insecure about what he cannot give. Always a valuable asset para sa kahit anong koponan na laruan niya. It's that IQ really. Right. Lead is 13. Here's Mark Cruz. Wow. Thought about shooting it from the logo. Elvin Chan. Popping out, sit against Dave Moralde. Two-man game, Chan on the drive, Elvin Chan, that's a charge. <laughs> <laughs> and he doesn't agree with that call at all. Let's look at that again. That's a third personal against Elvin Chan. I would love to see the replay on that one, but from our vantage point, it looked like Nila Basenka niya Siko as he attempted that layup. Jalen Anderson set to check back in. Two minutes and 25 remaining. Dave Moralde, a charge on the other end against him. Oh, it looks or like it's a, block. a block. Yeah, against Elvin Chan. And he's still disagreeing. <laughs> of course, he's going to disagree. What say you? He actually has a case on that one. He was able to beat Moralde to the spot. It was established in Dave extended that arm to be able to create that space so he has a case in contesting that call to see Elvin Chan nevertheless Dave Morade will proceed to the line as Gerald Anderson checks back in again one can wonder kung makapagsabay sabay nga itong sina Gerald Anderson Elvin Chan Chris Masaglang the crowd favorites just how loud it is gonna be here in the Lagao gym as Moralde makes the first free throw, the lead cut down to 12. Oh, Moralde, you also have to applaud his effort here on the court. Staying cool, not being affected by what's happening around him and just playing good basketball para dito sa Bacoor City Strikers. 
Timeout dito ang Jensen. Lead cut down to 11. 2 minutes and 23 before halftime. The Jensen Warriors currently, their standing is 10 wins and 5 losses, 6 straight victories for them. And if they win tonight, that will be 7 straight. Their next 3 games, Marikina, Zamboanga, and San Juan. It's going to be tough, but do you think there's a possibility that they can win 10 straight games? Oh yeah, definitely. With the way that they're playing right now, and this is a good asset test for Sakanila at this point of their winning run because Bakoor is a team that is very confident that they can hack out the victory in today's game and very competitive at that although they're down by 11 right now they are really giving the fight dito sa Jensan and not making it easy for the blue shirts in this game to get this victory that's a good matchup coming up against Zamboanga two teams in the upper part of the South Division playoff picture Anderson Shot clock reads five. Gerald Anderson, he scores! You see how efficient he moves on the floor. Walang sayang nagalaw. Everything with intention. Ito si Gerald Anderson. 44, 31. That extra work paying off. Even during the days where he has tapings. Anderson getting the stop. Rebound Jensen. They have the numbers. Mark Cruz. On to Gerald. Oh, dangerous situation. And a turnover forced by Bacor. Oh, but opportunity right there para sa kanya. Oh, Ooh, counter sila. steal. Good defense by Anderson. The other end, Nico Elorde. Two point guards now present for Jensen. Mark Cruz driving right. Taking his time. Six on the shot clock. Cruz will fire. That's too strong. Rebound, Erika Funya. Uh, two straight missed opportunities para sa kanila. But they need to get a stop here. Under a minute remaining before halftime. Montuano on the catch. Lalabas, kay Dave Poralde. Driving right. Contact right there. Yep, that's Late a whistle, call. a charge. You saw Yumbelo niya in trying to Draw the contact on that move into Steve Moralde. So take a look at this epic move of the game in partnership with OK Bet. Own the win. Gerald Anderson, his third basket of the evening. That guy staying aggressive, finding an opening at the middle. Time out here. The score is 44 to 31. 44 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. Nagbabalik po ang Maharlika Pilipinas Basketball League. Liga ng Bawat Pilipino, 43 seconds before halftime. It's 44-31, the home team currently with a 13-point advantage. The Balabas, Gerald Anderson. Nico Elorde stays with it. There's a foul as Mark Cruz goes down. Abacor City, they're having a problem 
defending the firepower dito ng Jensen Warriors. You see here, two point guards on the floor. Nico Elord and Mark Cruz, but both of these guys, they're not looking to pass here, Mix. They're looking to score the basketball. Mark Cruz, again, in the previous game, only had 1.0 out of 7 shooting from the field. Nico Elord, 5 points, 2 out of 13 from the field. That's a combined 2 out of 20. As you take a look at some celebrities, Onyok Velasco, JC Tioseco, Joros Gamboa, Gene Padilla, Matt Evans, Gab Lagman, Joko Diaz, Joseph Pitankol, and Derek Hubalde, our celebrities who played in the first game for today. That actually, because of that game, it filled up the whole arena. Yeah. Puno puno tong uh, Lagao Gym. Right now, it's a different type of action for you guys. Five second differential between the shot clock and the game clock. JR Gallet. Driving left. Gallet staying aggressive. No good. Ball tapped away in favor of Bakaor. Oh, they really need to score on this to cut the lead going into halftime. You don't want to be down by 15 points or more against this Gen Santin who has been streaking so far. No more shot clock here. Four seconds to go. Rebound belongs to Anderson. Does he know about it? Was not aware. So that's going to conclude our first two quarters of play. The Jensen Warriors looking very good. They're up by 15. A lot of players stepping up once again, Mix. This has been the story of the six-game winning streak for the Jensen Warriors. And credit to Coach Marlon Martin and his coaching staff na hindi nag-iiba yung laro nila game in and game out. That's the reason why they've been wrapping up the victories in this one. But this guy, Mark Cruz, this time the one spearheading that attack para sa Jensen in this game. Already in double figures with 11, has three rebounds and four assists as well. Despite a finger injury, his middle finger on his right hand, that's a shooting hand. And his struggle in the previous game, zero out of seven, one point only against uh, Quezon City. He's off to a good start, well on pace to try to match or even surpass his 29-point uh, output two games back. Now we turn you over to Sheila Salaysay. Yes, Megs. Hi, Mark. Mark, your team holds the record, the second team that holds the most number of straight wins. Meron kayong anim. Ano sa tingin mo yung advantage ng team mo and uh, or how are you able to capitalize on that advantage? Uh, yung teamwork namin mas, uh, mas tumatatag na uh, along the way. So, yun yung tingin kong nagiging uh, key namin, then yung motivation namin, uh, yung samahan namin, yun yung pinaka-importante. Um, yung siyempre, para sa mga tao, mga taga Jensen, siyempre. Isa rin matibay na kalaban ng Baku or Strikers, pero paano ba aalagaan itong kalamangan nyo to get another win? Um, lamang kami ngayon first half, so kailangan namin uh, uh, maging consistent, sa, lalo na sa depensa, then mag-execute ng plays kung uh, tatawag ni Coach Marlon. So, yun yung pinaka-importante. Maraming salamat, Mark Cruz from Jensen Warriors. Stay tuned. Up next is the halftime interview dito sa OK Bet Maharlika Pilipinas Basketball League.
Kakatut of Dito So Okay Bet Maharlika Pilipinas Basketball League Live sa Legao Gym Jensen General Santa City at this halftime I'm in privilege to be welcoming and interviewing walang ibang ating founder pambansang kamo Senator Manny Pacquiao Hi boss I'm happy to see you again Boss um, yun nandito tayo sa Jensen your hometown ano po bang pwede naming abangan ng ating mga kaliga sa upcoming events ng ating liga? Yung mga basketball fans, abangan nyo po yung All-Star Game ng MPBL ngayong October 1. At uh, sa karagdagang mga information, uh, abangan nyo lang po. Marami pong ilalabas ng uh, MPBL. And then uh, sa lahat ng mga taga Jensen, Happy Tuna Festival sa ating mga bisita. Maraming salamat. At uh, salamat sa inyong pagsuporta sa ating uh, Jensen team, Jensen Warriors. Boss, uh, meron pa tayong another... Um... Bismin game this coming weekend, baka pwede mo na silang invite. At sa lahat ng mga taga-Bisaya, sabangan nyo po ang game namin sa IBBN dyan sa Bisaya. Sa Bisaya, sa, lalo na sa Sambuanga. Ay, gusto ka pang ba pangpasalamatan, ba't iyan? Eh, nice kong pasalamatan nationwide ang lahat ng uh, sumusuporta ng IBBN. Talagang uh, uh, nagpapasalamat ako ng malaki dahil uh, hindi lamang po tausan ang nanonood, kundi million po ang nanonood ng mga Pilipino sa MPBL at nakasuporta. Ito po ay uh, nagbibigay ng kasiyahan at uh, opportunity sa ating mga uh, basketballista at sa lahat ng mga staff ng MPBL. Thank you and um, ito ang liga ng bawat Pilipino. At hindi rin magiging posible ito boss dahil sa inyo kaya maraming maraming salamat sa opportunities na binigay mo sa aming lahat through this league. Ngayon, uh, maraming salamat again our MPBL founder, Senator Manny Pacquiao. Before we head on to the third and fourth quarter, let's all watch the top 10 plays of the week. That's Sarah looking ahead. That's Sarah all the way, but he's blocked by Ballesteros. How about that guy's effort to chase down? <laughs> He ran the floor, good anticipation, rejecting that shot. Sabi ni Jason King, kalabaw lang daw yung tumakanda. But yes, spinning middle, out of control, baseball pass, at si Inigo, touchdown, James Martinez. Lagi ni Trader eh, lagi ka na yung stop ni Red. Look at that pretty pass, like a quarterback. Going into his running back for the touchdown, Igo to Martinez. Borsang had multiple best player of the game awards as soon as Keith Jimenez went down. Jimenez gets the seal, bounce pass to Sanga. Layup is good. Displaying that against Borsang. Here's the steal here. Those long arms of the law bothering that pass by Joshua Gonzalez and dropping it off at the last moment by Borsang. And the Buan. Will he push? Oh, what a bounce pass there by Engio on the hoop and the harp. Para kay Piboy Engio. What a pass right there by John Katipuan. So good. You have to see it twice. Look at that pass. A slick one delivered by Piboy Engio. We bring you this epic move of the game in partnership with OK Bet. With OK Bet, it's the win. Another three in front of Coach Dewey Gonzalez, but to no avail. Steal here, Jason Grimaldo. Look out! There you go! A slam from Jason Grimaldo. Take a look at it once more. The center getting a steal. Clear pass to the rim. Going up for that one-handed slam. He's the delight of the Zofuanga bench. Again, pass the score effort from Sarangani, allowing Olivares to come up with the offensive rebound. But here, Jimenez, all nylon on that three-point shot. 12 points. Six rebounds. Take a look at that three-point shot by Kitty Menes. He likes this. Stopping and popping for three. In rhythm, set for the shot. You want to talk about him being back in the MPBL? Folks, he is back here in the MPBL. Robbie, bet up top. They go to Ballesteros. Palike Manana and Robbie with a big time three. Answering back with a three-point shot of his own. Pangotra kay James Castro. And this guy, he has been that lone, consistent shooter in this match for Pasig City. With Manala, okay, off that diamond elevator, sideline inbound play. Boom. Good steal. Rudy Langana. It's John Baloria ahead of the pack. Good pay. 
Konting fake lang. Babay talaga ang depensa. Let's look at that again. Did this earlier, but now from a harder angle. And on a fall away. So good, you have to see it twice. And that two defenders up in the air para kay John Baloria. <laughs> Almost the same thing. Just like last week. He last week lang basta sa this game. Let's get it here. Lastimosa has the basketball. On his return, he delivers a clutch shot. Welcome back, Carlo Lastimosa. Wow, what a way for you to return from a hamstring injury. Carlo Lastimosa, from the very beginning of this ball game, he was the focal point of the offense, as he pointed out. And now in the clutch, they go to him, a step back, and he puts it in yeah. for two. Big time player, big time basket. 72-66. Back to Gonzalez, they go to a plaza, catch and fire, bombs away! The three-point shot, proving to be the weapon of choice. Para sa Batanga City Embassy Chill in this last couple of possessions. An unlikely hero in Mark Cruz, able to drain it from straight away. And Cedric Plaza, someone who uh, they have been relying on, game in and game out. Getting a three-point shot from that right corner. 16 points and 10 rebounds for Cedric Ablaza, who brings us his epic move of the game in partnership with OK Bet. Hello, hello. Hello. 
Test one. Alright, MPBL fans, habang meron tayong teacher toss, eto, happening nyo naman tayo para sa Jinky Beauty Skin. Hanap tayo ng Jinky Beauties tonight. Ayan, nais pa tayo ng ating live cam, napakaganda ng smile. At para laging fresh at ma-beauty, gumamit ng Jinky Beauty Skin. Come back to you live from the Tuna capital of the Philippines, General Santos City in the Lagao Gymnasium. Halftime between the Warriors and the Bacoor City Strikers. As we are currently experiencing the biggest lead of the ball game for Jensen and Javi. It has been complete domination for them. Mark Cruz coming alive, scoring 11 points, grabbing three rebounds, dishing out four assists. And Jensen has shot the ball very well. Later on, you're gonna, you're gonna see the numbers. Field goal shooting, rebounding, napakalaki ng disparity against Bacoor. Yeah, Bacoor was able to come close towards the latter part of that first quarter. But come the second frame, itong Jensen bumulusok right away. And their unit, that unit that you see here on the floor, as Paolo Castro gains that three-point shot. John Orbeta, Nico Elorde, JP Belenson, all of them contributing to their cause and extending their lead here. And Elvin Chan had some explosive plays on the floor in that first half. Para sa team ni Coach Marlon Martin, Gerald Anderson also. Everybody just pitching in para dito sa kupunan ng Jensen, which was able to erect. Sabi mo nga, makes the biggest lead of the ball game at 15, 46 to 31 at the end of two quarters. You see here, 60% from the floor para dito sa Jensen Warriors, only limiting the Bacoor City Strikers to just 32%. The shots that went in yesterday for the Strikers, not able to find the bottom of the net in today's game. Rebounds have been dominated as well by the Jensen Warriors. Assists, ganun rin, plus seven sila in that department. And the Strikers, they're committing nine turnovers. More ang ginagawa dito ng Jensen. But, uh, they have been able to keep the lead because of their hot shooting from the field in the start of this game. Leading scorers, Ian Melencio, JR Galit, Dave Morante, and Mark Pangilinan for Bacor. The other end, we mentioned Mark Cruz, Nico Panganiba, Nico Elorde, and Gerald Anderson as well. And Javi, I want to men mention something very underrated in basketball, and it's the plus-minus statistic. I'm going to need you to break it down for us later on, but... Uh, to get you started, Gerald Anderson has the biggest plus-minus so far in the game. It's plus 13 for him. What does that mean? Oh, that means whenever he is on the floor, good things happen para dito sa Jensen Warriors. They're getting the lead. Hindi sila, uh, di, di sila behind in that game. Tuwing nasa sahig siya. So he is definitely a positive impact in this game to say the least para dito sa kanyang kumpunan. In layman's terms as well, when... Gerald Anderson is playing. There's a 13-point differential to Jensen's favor as Anderson misses the first shot in the second half. Battle for the board. It's gonna go Jensen's way. Joining Gerald are Nico Panganiba and Marlon Gomez, Don Reverente, and Mark Cruz. The other end for Bahor, we have RJ Ramirez, Lander Cannon, JR Gallet, Mark Montuano, and Ian Valencio. In this game, no Lester Reyes, still out due to a calf injury. J.R. Gallet, first guy to come off the bench. 
to try to become a spark plug para kay Coach Willie Henaralao. 46-31, Jensen cooling down a little bit here, but they're getting these offensive boards. Mark Cruz, his turn to fire, too strong. Finally, Bangor with the possession. Forward pass, no catch for the strikers. That's a bad decision right there by Ian Melenzo. Usually very steady with the basketball, but he tried to look ahead early on, just couldn't pass it just yet. But when he decided to, was too much muscle on that pass. Jensen shot the ball at a 61% clip in the first half. Not the same case here in the second half as Don Reverente gets the contact. Again, Bacoor, they seem to be still clueless on how to defend the offense of the Warriors in this game as we begin our second half. They try to keep in step, but the constant movement mix of the players, netong blue shirts, whenever someone has that basketball, weak side, mapa strong side, man yan. The movement has just really done a lot of wonders para dito sa kanila in this game. There you see JJ Helderbrand on your screen. Used to play here in the MPBL for the Imus Bandera. Helderbrand and some friends, Tino Cañaleta, Jerwin Gaco. Even Mac Macardona is here. Later on, maybe we're going to see them. 47-31. Ian Melencio. Cannon asking for it. Against Don Reverente. Lander Cannon on the spin. That's too strong. Rebound. There you see the high-flying ability of Nico Panganiba just unable to fully control that basketball. And you know what makes both of these teams have been very aggressive? Kaya lang, sobrang aggressive naman itong Jensen Warriors. Look at that. Nico Panganiba coming out of nowhere to slag that basketball out of the, ha out, out of the hands of Ladder Cannon. And showing us shades of Scotty Thompson. Yes, sir. As we turn you over to Sheila Salaysay. The strikers has not been playing their game. Ang concern ni coach really ang kanilang defensa, and he encourages his guys to take the off open shot if they are if they have that because uh, they're good when it comes to their offense. Para naman sa Jensen, hindi natatapos ang game after the first half. According to coach Marlon Martin, they need to start strong third quarter and sustain until the end. Para naman meron daw sila magandang ipabawot para sa mga uh, supporters nila dito sa Jensen. Balik sa inyo. Thank you so much, Sheila. Bahor, six wins, nine losses, number seven in the South Division. Jensen, ten wins, five losses, six straight victories, number four in the South. As Panganiban misses from three, rebound belongs to Lander Cannon. The other end we go. J.R. Gallet being defended by Nico Panganiban. Where will that open shot come from? Para sa Bahor. How could they generate it? As Ramirez scores inside. RJ Ramirez, he did not see a lot of action in that first half. After starting the game, was pulled out at the 7.30 mark by Coach Willie Hinaralao. Hasn't seen the floor since now. And it is on his shoulders to be able to generate some points para dito sa kanyang kumpunan. That was only the second attempt of this ball game for RJ Ramirez. But remember, that guy came alive in the fourth quarter of the previous game. Turnover, Reverente. Numbers. Gerald Anderson, that's good. And it's turnovers like that that are hurting the Bacor City strikers. And one more para sa kanila after another errant pass by Ian Melenzo. That's already three in this quarter. Take a look at this epic move of the game in partnership with OK Bet on the win. Before those turnovers, there's that basket by RJ Ramirez who needs to become very aggressive here in the second half. First of all, they have to take care of that basketball. 49-33, 8 on the shot clock. Mark Cruz. A oh, good block by Melencio. Fortunately, a sorry pass. Offensive rebound for Riverente. His turn. Oh, good defense by Cannon on the block. Bodies on the floor and is recovered by Melencio. Foul given up by Riverente to stop the play. There's the effort from the defensive end para dito sa Bacor City Strikers but you have to be able to finish those plays and what an effort that was but here's a shot by Gerald Anderson very very efficient in today's game 8 points in the ball game for Gerald Anderson 
following his three-point output last night. Looking very comfortable as a starter in his second game here in Jensa in his hometown. 49-33. Here's J.R. Gallet. The spin. That's a beautiful move by Gallet. You need more of those shots going to the basket. They cannot settle, afford to settle for those outside shots because they have not been falling in today's game. Only eight attempts from the three-point country in today's game para sa Bacoor City. How about J.R. Gallet amidst this very strong and talented lineup of Bacoor. He's the one shining currently with eight points. Three on the shot clock. Panganiban scores inside. Although on that occasion, waiting to rotate to Nico Panganiban, who was all but a short of those two points. 51-35. 17 assists for Jensen, 7 for Bacoor. One more try here for the white shirt. Screen up top, Melencio down the middle. That's two free throws. Got away from his primary defender off of that screen by Lander Cannon. Decided to attack. A little hesitation, the crossover and the layup fouled on that attempt. But here's that pass. Excellent recognition by Mark Cruz to Nico Panganiban. Playing like a grizzled veteran already here in the MPBL. He's only 23 years old. And uh, his veteran, Mark Cruz, great for him to spot him inside. See how quick his eyes were to locate him. As this free throw is brought to you by Extreme Appliances, ang subok at kompletong appliance brand ng Pilipinas. <laughs> Panganiban with that board, sky high for it, kick out, the turn to favor, Mark Cruz of downtown. That's a trust that each of these players ng Jensan have been giving each other during this six-game winning streak that they are on. And if they continue to be consistent with that and not falter, Mahirap talaga sila talunan dito. Cannon getting a jumper. First two points in the ball game for Lander Cannon. Drive inside. That defense of Bahor just slowly but surely being broken down by Jensen. Oh, they're making mincemeat of that defense. No resistance at all. The other end, Ramirez would miss. Rebound, Galit. Biggest lead of the ball game right now for the Jensen Warriors. Ian Melencio, hook shot is good. One guy ahead, it's Marlon Gomez. Jensen will slow it down. Panganiban, oh, aggressive drive. A left-handed layup on the right side. Now this scoring rampage by the guards and the wing players, Nitong Jensen, will now open up the opportunities for them to slow up the game, play more deliberate, and give an opportunity to their post players to operate on that low block. Good feed. RJ Ramirez finding Mark Montuano. We're trading baskets here. Something that Bacoor could not afford. They're gonna need to make some stops with this guy's feeling and Nico Panganiban. Don Reverente facing up. Here comes the Ant-Man. Seven on the shot clock. Reverente able to escape the defense. They're just not marking those people off that basketball, they're able to stop the primary and initial attack. Kaya alam wala nang na tumutulong dun pag uh, drop pass. Melencio, aggressive drive. This guy coming alive in this game. Ian Melencio is up to 11 points. But again, makes defense. Bakoor has to stop the basketball. Trading baskets here in the third. 14 to 13 is the scoring output oh, in no favor count. of Jensen. Reverente thought about it. Six on the shot clock. Anderson on the cut. Down to two seconds. And there's a foul at the last second. What a demoralizing call right there. And a bailout for the Jensen Warriors. But that is just bad decision making by the strikers. Only two seconds left on the shot clock para sa kanila. There was that shot by Reverente off that another find by Cruz. And Ian Melencio scoring on points 10 and 11. Nico Elorde checking back in alongside Chris Musaglang and John Urbeta. Pasok din si Mark Pangilinan alongside Hafer Mondragon. Pangilinan's gonna have to put some shots up and make some stops as well. 60-44, under three minutes to go here in the third. 
These two teams won yesterday. Which team will be the lone undefeated squad as we exit Jets and Nico Elorde making another basket. Mark Cruz sits down. Nico Elorde enters. Two points nonetheless para sa kanila hindi pa rin nagbago. Pangilinan on the catch. That's a foul. That's three free throws. Para kay Mark Pangilinan. Sir Beta, matatawagan. Take a look at the replay. They like this play. Well, it looked like Pangilinan extended his leg, which made Orbeta draw contact with him. And he could even argue that ball don't lie. Pangilinan still has two tries. Now, we mentioned Mark Pangilinan's struggle from the field. Past couple of games. Previous outing still did not make a three. Only three three-point makes in the last four games para kay Mark Pangilinan, very uncharacteristic. But he did mention to us that he needs to work on his footwork in terms of setting his speed up so he can go up for that shot even more properly. Especially because the defense is even more focused against him as he has been making three-point shots all season long. Four on the shot clock. Mondragon will fire. Too strong. Masaglang on the board. Second try. Another miss. Evidente on the third try. Wala pa rin. And finally, Bacor gets it. 16 point disadvantage. Melencio on to Montuano. Catch and fire. That's a big time shot for Bacor. And finally, a basket here for Montuano. It only had four points in this game prior to that. Now with points five and six. After that jumper, one guy who also has to come alive para dito sa strikers. Motuano averaging 13 and a half points per game. He had 20 in their previous outing just last night. Pasagla, short, rebound, tap. Cannon tried to swipe it. That's a foul against it. They're trying to out jump the Jensen players itong Bacoor City, but the Warriors, they're just too much more athletic than the players of the strikers especially on the floor here so they will have to box out and mark their defenders prevent those offensive players from getting the offensive boards Nader Cano now has four fouls in this game that's why he has to come out Pasok dito King Destacamento Joining him are RJ Ramirez, Ian Melencio, Mark Pangilinan, and Mark Montuano. Christian Faritos also in the game to join John Orbeta, Hafer Mondragon, Nico Elorde, and Chris Masagla. Shot clock reads 11. 90 seconds to go in the third. Elorde on the drive, reverse layup, wild shot. Masagla bouncing out. Ball in favor of Bacoor. Once again, Jensen almost coming up with a second chance opportunity. Bacoor has to rebound that basketball. That was one of the stories already in the first half. 23 to 13, the advantage in rebounding for Jensen. Montuano on the fake. Eight on the shot clock. Kind of barge his way. Montuano will score. And Bacoor, they have. They had 49 rebounds yesterday against QC. They're not even halfway through that total in this game. He cut down to 12. 45 seconds in the third. Orbeta stepping back. Short battle for the boards. It ends up with Jensen again. Get a call against Hafer Mondragon. Once again, another crack at the grass para dito sa Jensen. Lucky for Bacoor that Mondragon was called for that offensive foul. That happened right in front of the referee. Ian Milencio staying aggressive here in the third. It's 62 to 50, 38 seconds before the end of three. Milencio being hounded by Elorde. 
that's what we can expect. The pressure defense with Nico Elorde. Just a little bit too much pressure that time around. Yeah, that's right. And uh, not really something that you expect him to do. Ito si Nico Elorde. Give up that foul when you're already in the penalty situation. Usually, a guy who is very aware of the situation on the floor para sa kanyang kupunan. Melencho at the line. First one is good. Slowly but surely, Bacor has been trimming down this lead. But I ask you this. If you're Bacor... Given the way that you're playing right now, will you be happy by the end of the third? Well, at least now you're just after a 10-point lead after that trip to the line para kay Ian Melen. So definitely, you will be happy with what you're doing right now and trying to trip down this advantage. Move on from all your mistakes in that third quarter and look forward to what you can do better in the final frame. 10-point deficit still very much possible for the strikers, but they're going to do it against a Red Hot Jetson squad and the rest of their crowd here. Bacor City Strikers, currently number 7 in the South Division. There you see the schedule for them. Bacolod, Bacol, uh, Bacolod, Caloacan, and Valenzuela. These teams, no pushovers para dito sa Strikers. And we thought yesterday that was going to be a start of good things to come para sa kanila. This time, that pack trying, starting to slip away from them. But now, just a 10-point advantage. Still very manageable, as you see here. Uh, Miss uh, Janisha Pacquiao and... Uh, the wife of our beloved founder, si, uh, Ma'am Jinky. Six second differential between the shot clock and the game clock here in the third. 62 52. Bounce pass. Good steal by Montuana. One guy ahead. RJ Ramirez all the way for two. He cut down to eight. We have six seconds to go. Nico Elordi looking up. Foul given up by Milencio as they do have one last foul to give. Good call right there by Ian Milencio to give up the foul. Here's that pass forward to RJ Ramirez. Soaring and flying for that left hand finish. Cut this lead down to single digits. One last stop here para sa Bacoor. Three seconds. Elorde on the drive. Good defense by Destacamento. He was actually far from the picture right there to si King Destacamento, but was able to get into that. Made himself available for that block. Good stop to finish the third frame para dito sa Bacor. And after being down by as much as 18 points in this game, Bacor able to bounce back at the latter part of the third quarter. So they outscore the Jensen Warriors by 7 points in the third frame. What a feat that was for them because it looked like at the beginning of our second half that Jensen was already going to blow this game wide open. But they came back, itong Bacor, and now down just to an 8-point advantage going into the final frame. This is day number two in your MBBL action from the General Santos City or the Tuna capital of the Philippines as we come to you live from the Lagao Gymnasium. 
We're actually celebrating the 24th Tuna Festival here in Jensen. But at the same time, we're celebrating history once more in the MPBL. As this is our first time here in the season visiting the hometown of our very own MPBL founder, Manny Pacquiao. Mix Gomez, happy Palanya, and Sheila Salaysay at your service. Bakoor starting this quarter very aggressive. They're down by eight. Ayan na ngayon sila sabi natin kanina mix Bacor able to outscore Jensen by seven in that third period after getting blown out by 22 in the second period. The first was particularly close, but it was really that second quarter that catapulted Jensen to a huge lead, which they built on in the first part of that third frame. But Bacor City able to come back and right now starting off the payoff period with a basket at the free throw line. Garing dito kay RJ Ramirez. How about these players of Bacor sticking with it? Ian Melencio, RJ Ramirez, Mark Montuano, extended minutes here in the second half. The question is, do they have enough left in their tank to try to pull off a comeback? Exactly, Mix. That is what is on everybody's minds right now, especially those who watched the game yesterday. No signs of entry by Rafi Asidre, Jan Hamon, or even Paolo Castro. Let's see if makakabalik pa sila sa laro na to. But Coach Willie really putting heavy trust on these five guys. Melenso, Destacamento, Pangilinan, Ramirez, and Mark Matuano. Foul here against Ramirez. Jensen beginning with Mark Cruz, Marlon Gomez, Don Reverente, John Orbeta, and Nico Elorde. Jensen looking for their seventh straight win in the season. Three on the shot clock. Elorde for three. No good. Rebound Melenso. Good chance here for Bacoor. Ian Melencio, he is fouled. Very calm, very cool, very collected. Went through the defense right there. That crossover separating himself from Cruz. Elorde tried to block his shot, but drew contact on the backside. Again, Ian Melencio trying to will his team back into this one. But this is going to be a crucial substitution. Nico Panganiban checking back in. He has been one of the top performers for the Jensen Warriors, 13 points so far. And he has also grabbed four rebounds, shooting to the ball at a 60% clip in this game. Free throws. Para sa Bacoor. As Ian Melencio turns the lead down to five. Bacoor still in a very good contention here. Eight on the shot clock. Another block by Destacamento. He has been very crucial here for Bacor. Ramirez down the middle. Layup is good. Lead cut down to three. Oh, there's going to be a delay of game warning here. Called on RJ Ramirez. But mix. Ito yung nangyari kahapon sa Bacor. It was their defense that fueled their offense. And right there, the block by King Destacamento on and, and on the other end the finish on the break by RJ Ramirez just a three point lead for Jensen right now block story on your screen six to nothing labang na labang dyan ang Bacoor City Strikers and Destacamento has a bulk of that remember Bacoor came off a strong fourth quarter against Quezon City they scored 36 points and allowed only 19 a 17 point turnaround Will that happen again right now? They're on pace to do that, but Jensen surely has something to say about it. They're still up by three. Panganiban on the catch. In and out. Rebound Melencio. Chance for Bacor to trim the lead down to one or possibly even tie it. Melencio working with Montuano. Watch out for Panganiban. Almost a steal. Eight on the shot clock. Ramirez for the tie. Yes, sir. In what seemed to be a blowout in the beginning of our third quarter is now becoming to be a classic ending sa laro na to. And that is just wonderful for everybody watching in the venue right now being treated to a great game. Take a look at that shot by RJ Ramirez. That's a three-point shot to tie things up at 62 all. They're down by 8 points to start this quarter. Down by 15 to start the second half. They actually started the second half slow. 
Magenta at one point led by 18 points, but slowly but surely, because of the hard work of this Bacoor squad led by Mark Montuano, RJ Ramirez, and Ian Milencio, we're all tied at 62. And you see there, Coach Willie, very proud of the way his boys are playing on the floor, really working hard, doing everything possible. Pati yung mga malilit na bagay, like marking your man on the rebound play, blocking shots, running the floor, passing the ball, everything working well for, for the strikers right now. Let's talk about the games on Friday. Muntinlupa versus Bacolod, and then it is Sarangani defending their home court for the first time this season, going up against the Quezon City MG Cars. There's a technical problem here. The microphone of our arena announcer is down. It's broken. That's why we're not going to be able to hear Richard Tampos anymore. But the action continues. Under eight minutes to go. Tied at 62. 8-0 run for the Bacoor City Strikers. Mark Cruz, no good. Oh, a lot of physicality. A double foul between Ramirez and Nico Elorde. Well, the physicality has really been very high in this game. Kanina, we saw Elvin Chan and Dave Moralde going at it. Naman, it's Elorde and RJ Ramirez. RJ Ramirez has been very aggressive in this quarter. There was a defensive foul against him, a warning against him, and now a double foul. But at the same time, you have to love the competitiveness being displayed by our players. Oh yeah, definitely. And uh, a credit to RJ Ramirez, unfazed by Nico Elorde, who is obviously a grizzled veteran already, has experience playing at the PBA level. Here you see the Bacor City Strikers really loving how their team is performing. This guy on your screen, Ian Milenzo, responsible for this comeback alongside Mark Montuano and RJ Ramirez. This is the first game that Ian Milenzo has carried this level of responsibility to pull off a comeback para sa Bacor. Oh yeah, definitely. Yesterday it was Eric Acuna running the show beautifully, masterfully. Para dito sa strikers. Oh, wow. But right now, it's Ian Milenzo and that guy, RJ Ramirez, once again. Ramirez coming alive in the fourth quarter, proving to be his domain, especially in the past couple of games. Second lead of the ball game for Bacoor. That ball recovered by Ramirez. Tried to bounce it off of Reverente. Don recovers the attack on the other end. And Reverente will proceed to the line. Now everyone is feeling it here in Jensen. The excitement of this game has really climbed places. Look at that. Between the legs, crossover, and the finish on the left side by RJ Ramirez taking his defender to school. First Rito is good for Don Reverente. These fans of Jensen, it cannot get any better than this. Two oh, yeah. close games for your team on your home court. As this free throw is brought to you by Extreme Appliances, ang subok at kompletong appliance brand ng Pilipinas. Reverente making two. 64 all. Second deadlock of the ball game. Three minutes gone by in the fourth frame. Still a long way to go. A lot of basketball here in Jensen. Pangilinan, shot clock reads seven. They go to RJ. He has been hot in this quarter. Missing on the three, but recovered by the Sacramento. Pass inside. That's a walk against Montuano. That was a close call. I'm not really sure about that, but that looked clean to me, Migs. Almost got away with it. You can barely hear the whistle here in Jensen. Six minutes, 42. Tied at 64. Marlon Gomez. Kick out. Leverente thought about it. Down the middle. Strip. Good defense by Bacoor. Ahead they go. RJ Ramirez to two. The control, the poise to be able 
to hang in the air despite the defense in traffic, still finishing for two points. Beautiful reverse. Third lead in the ball game for Bacor, 66-64. Lot of physicality, no fouls called until that moment. It's against Mark Montuano. Oh, that's only going to be the third on Mark Montuano. He has been able to control giving up the fouls in this game. Look at that clean swipe by Mark Pangilinan. And Milencio, just the ability to get it forward to his teammate RJ Ramirez, threading the needle with that pass. And now the strikers up by two, their first taste of the lead in a while. A 20 point swing in the second half after the biggest lead of 18 points for the Jensen Warriors midway through the third. And again, we raise that question up that we asked in the beginning of the fourth. Do RJ Ramirez, Ian Milencio, and Mark Montuana have enough left in their tank? Sama mo na dyan, si King Destacamento at si Mark Pangilinan. This five has been working very hard to pull off this comeback. We've seen it a lot this season, Mix. Whenever a team that is not as deep as paper compared to the other squad who previously had that huge advantage, pag sila ang nanguna, suddenly papasok ang ibang players ng kabilang team and they will reclaim the, the lead in that game because they had fresher legs. Montuano, Bajor is up by one, 66-65, Ramirez, pull up, that's a shot, he puts it in. He is just unconscious right now and feeling it, ito si RJ Ramirez. 17 points in this ballgame for RJ Ramirez after being scoreless in the first half. Oh, turnover, great defense by Montuano. You can see Mark Montuano breathing heavily as he walks down the court. This has been that magic five for coach Willy Hineralao. Unfortunately, a turnover on Melencio. Lead is three. Mark Cruz. Found even asking for it. They don't give it to him. Mark Cruz on the left side. Still has it. Masagla on to Nico. His turn to drive. Panganiban, beautiful feed to Marlon Gomez. Other young players would crumble in that situation, but he asked, he demanded for that basketball. Here's that steal by Ping Masaglang. And that drive, the sidestep met by the defense, dropped it off at the last moment to his big man, Marlon Gomez, for the easy finish. Jensen down by just one point right now, 68 to 67. This guy was scoreless in the first half. But RJ Ramirez coming alive in the third and fourth quarters. 17 points, two rebounds and four assists so far. He has been doing a yeoman's job in willing his team back into this game, even getting the lead. Together with Ian Milencio, they have proven to be the dynamic duo para dito sa Bacor City Strikers. And RJ Ramirez, wow. He has been on a roll in the past few minutes. Para sa kanyang kupunan. RJ Ramirez averaging 11 points. Or, sorry, let me correct that. He scored 11 points in their previous outing. Has obviously surpassed it today. But again, do they have enough left in the tank? This five of Bacoor. Four minutes and 48. Seven on the shot clock. Pass inside. And there's a foul, but no shot at it. Only the fourth team foul, laban dito si Jensen, but Bacor, they're already in the penalty here. So this could be something that Jensen could take advantage of from here on out. But they will have to get this stop on the baseline inbound. 14 seconds left on the shot clock para dito si Strikers. 
Manganinan popping out. This is going to be big. No good. Oh, Destacamento for the putback. Oh, Marlon Gomez failing to block out Destacamento as King. Kulang na lang. I-dunk niya yung bola. Could have done it. He was up there. Now they force a stop. 70-67. Bahor looking good and feeling very confident here on the road against Jetsai. Four minutes and 19. Panginan. He fires again. Short. Rebound Melenzo. Another try. Ian. Ball tapped away in favor of Bahor. Uh, we were trying to find out if these guys have what it takes to be able to finish this game because they have been on the floor for quite a long period of time already. Ito mga players na strikers. Some altercation here between our players. The bench of Bahor yelling at RJ Ramirez to calm down. Remember, Ramirez has been really Passionate, should I say, in this fourth quarter. Good call for a warning. Double foul. Has to be careful. Four seconds on the shot clock. Ramirez will miss. Rebound, Panganiban. That would have been a demoralizing shot. 70-67. Under four minutes to go here in Jensen. The final game here in the Tuna capital of the Philippines. Pangaliban on the drive. Oh, he's blocked. Another great block by Bahor. Melenzo looking to escape. They give it to the trailer. Back to Ian. Top lock reach 14. Melenzo. Playing with that screen. They go to Montuano. His turn to drive. Tapped away off of Riverente. That gamble almost paying off para kay Don Reverente. But had it not went out of bounds, that would have been an easy score for 2 para sa Bacor. Baseline inbound. 4 on the shot clock. Montuano, he has to fire. Short. Rebound pa saglang and he tracks it down. Jensen down by just 3 points. Mark Cruz up top. Jump shot. Olayan, what a rebound by Masaglang. But a sorry miss on the putback. Oh, I would have loved for them to recycle that play, set it up once again. That was a rush to them by Chris Masaglang. Here's RJ Ramirez against Masaglang. See that pesky defense from Masaglang. Montuano against Marlon Gomez. Four on the shot clock. Panginan has the fire. They go to Montuano to beat the shot clock. That's too strong. And Marlon Gomez will let the ball go out of bounds. Well, there was a some there were a couple of players fighting for position underneath off of that rebound play. But no foul called by your referees, letting the players play. Two minutes and 28 remaining in the fourth and final frame. Pangariba. Crossover down the middle. What a layup. Big time play for Nico Panganiban. This could be quite a coming out party para sa kanya. Although he has had some beautiful games in this season, I don't think he has yet to prove himself in situations like this na humahabol sila. 15 points for Panganiban. We're down to our final two minutes. Montuana's turn to drive. Ball is loose in favor of Bahor, but just as we announced that it is the last two minutes, the referees will review it. This is just a one-point lead here, Biggs. And crucial, crucial situations for both squads. Here's that drive by Montuano. Ooh. That looked at, to have been off of Mark. That's why everyone reacted here. They're going to change the call in favor of Jetson. They now have a chance to take the lead back after leading by as much as 18 points in the second half. Their biggest as well in this game. Oh, gut check time right here for Jetson. Their biggest test so far in this six game win streak. Mark Cruz, Bismasaglan. Nico Panganiban, Marlon Gomez, 
And Don Reverente. Pangaliban! Wow! This guy is made of steel. Super gutsy on that drive. In the words of his teammates and coaches, Nico Pangariban is the next big thing, but RJ Ramirez has something to say about that. What an epic battle we are witnessing right here. Makes such a classic. And Pangariban is asking for that basketball. Here he is. Pangariban, no foul. Referee points Bacor's way, but they will review. You mentioned, Javi, Panganiban has yet to prove himself as one of the stars in the MPBL. This could be his chance to do it. That's right. You know, he, as we mentioned, marami naman siya magandang laro this season. Kaya lang, this is a big moment para sa kanyang kumpunan. They've been going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the strikers team even more down at the moment in this fourth quarter. But can he be able to lead his team to victory in this game? such gut-wrenching times for both squads here and Nico Panganiban very lucky that the ball will stay with their team I believe that was a bad shot taken by him three strikers players collapsed on the defensive end on that shot coach Marlon Martin now calling a ceasefire to be able to draw up play on the 12 seconds that he has left on the shot clock this is the second to the last timeout of the Jensen Warriors. Both teams in penalties, 72-71. Manny Pacquiao, Jinky Pacquiao enjoying the action at the sidelines. This is the second time that the, the Jensen Warriors are trying to defend their home court here in the Lagao Gym Nation in the Tuna capital of the Philippines. So take a short break, 1 minute and 16 remaining. Nagbabalik po ang Maharlika Pilipinas Basketball League, ang Liga ng Bawat Pilipino. Second home court defense of the Jensen Warriors here in the Nagao Gymnasium. Going up against the Bahor City Strikers. Biggest lead was 18 in the game for Jensen. Bahor slowly but surely putting in the points, getting some stops, a couple of blocks here and there. RJ Ramirez leading the way in terms of scoring. They now have a one-point lead. But the possession belongs with Jensen. One minute and 16 to go. Bahor arguing that uh, they still deserve the possession of the basketball after the previous drive of Nico Pangariban. No, Migs, I think they're contesting that they want to see the replay on the big screen. Because of that incident? Yes. They want to be sure that the tama that they And here, here it is. It is. That's a tough angle because we can't see it from that angle. We have to get the reverse angle on that one. That is very inconclusive. And if the replay is inconclusive, the call should stand. And the call on the floor was Bacoor basketball. It looks like they're going to proceed with Jensen having the ball at the baseline. 12 on the shot clock. So it's Nico Panganiban working with Marlon Gomez, Don Reverente, Mark Cruz, and Chris Masaglang. One timeout remaining for Jensen and two for Bacoor. They're down by one. Balik tayo kay Panganiban against RJ Ramirez. That has been the matchup of the night. Kick out. Marlon Gomez thought about it. Three on the shot clock. Cruz has the fire. No good. Rebound. Oh, what an effort from Don Reverente. 
they get another chance. Here's Pangaliban at the corner. The VIPs are up, standing at the sideline. Kick out. Masaglang. Oh! He puts it in. This is what the MPBL is all about. The beauty of home court advantage. And what more to make it even more beautiful. Your hometown hero, Chris Masaglang, fresh off of getting best player of the game honors yesterday. He gets this pass from Nico Panganiban, specialty of the house, mid-range, and another big-time basket from him. Prior to that, makes Masaglang, he was 0 out of 4 in this game, but proceeds to knock down what could be the biggest shot of this game so far right now. Nico Panganiban, he did not force the issue unlike on that previous play where he attacked three strikers players on the drive. But on that one, kicked it out to his teammates. And Asiping Masaglang who was very confident, no hesitation in going up for his favorite shot, that perimeter jumper of his, all net on that play. And a marvelous effort as well from Don Reverente to get that offensive rebound. Our game reset, one timeout remaining for Bacoor and Jensen respectively. Both teams in penalty. The score is 73 to 72. Jensen has the lead with 46 seconds to go. The Jensen Warriors are looking for their seventh straight win of the season. Bacoor looking for back-to-back -back victories and they're sticking with that lineup that they have implemented on the court all fourth quarter long. It's Ian Melencio, Mark Montuano, King Destacamento, RJ Ramirez, and Mark Pangilinan. Intense, the thrust given by Coach Willie to these five on the floor. Sideline inbound, here's RJ Ramirez. Being defended by Nico Panganiban, Lumalabas, Panginidan. On the drive, bounce pass, Melencio. They go to Montuano, and he gives Bacoor the lead back. Mark Montuano silencing the crowd here, 74-73. What a patient play that was coming from the Bacor City Strikers. Melenzo was able to cut back door, Pangilinan able to locate him. He did not force the issue on the drive, instead was able to locate Mark Montuano who was wide open for a shot on the opposite short corner, something that Masaglang did for the Jensen Warriors on the previous play, but now Montuano getting them back in the driver's seat. Oh, what a pretty play that was. Marlon Gomez, he had to help on that drive by Melenzo. That's why he was late in closing out for that shot to Tony Mark Montuano. Mark Montuano is also known for his mid-range shot, but he usually takes it top of the key or on the wing, not on the corners. Big time shot for him to put Bacoor up top again after being down by as much as 18 points in this game. We have 35 seconds to go. No more timeouts for the Jensen Warriors. They're down by one and they have Chris Masaglang, their hometown here. Hero alongside Don Reverente, Mark Cruz, Marlon Gomez, and the rising star, Nico Panganiban. Here he is, being defended by RJ Ramirez. Shot clock reads 10. Panganiban on the drive, his spin, pass inside, Reverente, inside he scores! He could have gotten away with the walk there, Biggs. I want to see the replay on that, because there seems to be a step before the dribble. But our referees did not call anything on the floor. Etama to si Don Reverente. Still nothing to celebrate here for the Jensen Warriors because this is still a lot of basketball to be played and Bacor has possession. No travel. That replay very clear. It from our vantage point kasi nung uh, nangyari yung play, bukang may travel. But the replay doesn't lie. That play was very clean right there. Madam Jinky Pacquiao, 
is enjoying the action at the <laughs> sideline. But her husband, our founder, Manny Pacquiao, is just sitting in quiet in his peace. I don't know what he's feeling deep down in his heart. But right now, I'm pretty sure the rest of the people here in Jensen, their hearts are screaming out loud because they have a one-point lead. 75, 74, 25 seconds to go. And no timeouts remaining. Both teams in penalty. Jensen will have Marlon Gomez, Don Reverente, Chris Masaglang, Mark Cruz, and Nico Panganiban to defend. As for Bacoor, they stick with this five. Ian Melencio, King Sacramento, Mark Panginan, Mark Montuano, and RJ Ramirez. Can the Jensen Warriors hold on to protect their home court and win their seventh straight victory in the MPBL? Or can Bacoor pull off an 18-point comeback and get an upset? to get back-to-back -back victories. Destacamento, needing a teammate. Melencio going out, 10 on the shot clock. Screen by Pangininan. Ian Melencio going left. They go to RJ, Ramirez on the drive. Kick out, Pangininan for the lead. No good, Destacamento, no good. Jensen with the possession, five seconds to go. Down to two seconds, can they hold on? And there's the foul. This is not over yet. There was a foul by Melencio with still seconds remaining on the game clock. Referees are going to check how much time we're going to have and whether or not they did make it. But this was the play, the shot by Panganinan to try to win it for Bacoor. Just too strong. Another try for Destacamento. Short on the second one. And there's that foul by Ian Melencio. But the question is, is there time left? Yeah, but even if there was time left, Migs, wala na rin mangyayari dun sa outcome ng ating laro. Final score na lang siguro ang antayin natin after that. But this game, definitely a victory for the Jensen Warriors. I think that's safe to say already. Kasi even if masuti yung free throw sa kabila, I don't think Bacor has time left to hoist the shot up uh, from their backcourt. The coaching staff of Bacoor already telling their players to exit the game. Coach Willie now talking to the head of the referees, George Maxino. They're still viewing the replay. Everyone's already rejoicing and celebrating with a victory. Coach Willie still arguing here and we're waiting for a final call. It looks like the game is done. That seems to be it. That's right, yeah. That's the final score, 75, 70, 74. No and more fouls called. What a escape win by your Jensen Trailer here in Jensen. Okay, the Bahora City Strikers fight back from 18 MVP points down, but Friday, just one September point short, maybe even Osama one Osama second Osama. short, as the Jensen Warriors defend their home court. A marvelous effort from their team. Kita natin yung efforts ni Nico Panganiban, Marlon Gomez, Mark Cruz, Don Reverente. And of course, this was who had a jump shot for the ages here in Jensen. Ultimately, it is Nico Panganiban who is our player of the game, brought to you by OK Bet, the official partner of the MPBL with OK Bet on the win. 17 points, 5 rebounds, and 3 assists. What a marvelous performance from him. Had a lot of crucial moments, crucial baskets. In the end game, ultimately catapulting his team to the victory in today's game. What a classic it was mixed from both squads. Credit to both of them for giving us a great second game on their last day Dito sa Jensen. Two thrillers for the Jensen Warriors, both settled by a single possession. A three-point victory against Bacolod. Now a one-point victory against Bacor. What a way for us to celebrate the first time that we come here in the Lagao Gym in the Tuna capital of the Philippines as we go to our courtside reporter, Sheila Salaysay. Yes, Migs, kasama ko ang ating best player of the game. Walang iba kundi si Nico Panganiban from Jensen Warriors. Nico, congratulations on your seventh win tonight. 
lamang kayo almost all uh, throughout the game. Pero pag-usapan natin, pinang-exciting part, the fourth quarter, nakuhang tumabla at makahabol na nga ba or Pero paano nyo nagawang maging composed at makuha pa rin yung kalamangan? Uh, yun lang, fourth quarter na din. Wala na akong inisip kundi ibigay yung all out ko eh. Parang sabi ko na lang na fourth quarter na and kailangan namin dumiin. So yun, buti tumama ako nung fourth. 17 points, 5 assists, 3 rebounds. Wala kang takot. Composure is there. Wala nga takot sa pagpitaw ng mga shots mo kahit crucial. Uh, yun lang. Uh, binigyan ako ni coach ng confidence sa uh, loob ng court ng playing time. So yun, hindi ko naman sin sinasayang yung binibigay niyang opportunity sa akin. Uh, basta pagpasok ko ng court. Uh, yun lang. Ginagawa ko lang yung role ko sa team namin. Masaya, masaya lahat ng supporters nyo dito sa Lagaw Gym. This is your uh, chance para magpasalamat sa lahat na nandito at sumusuporta sa inyo. Uh, first of all, uh, nagpapasalamat ako sa buong Gensan, uh, sa supporta nila sa amin. Uh, Napaka-thankful namin na uh, nakapaglaro kami dito and ma-defend yung home court. Uh, especially uh, sa family ko, sa mama ko, sa kuya ko. Yung mga kaibigan ko dyan, uh, yung dalawang bro-bro ko, uh, LNJ Family, uh, J20, Sports Hapare, Los Gatos, Team Court, um, ano pa ba, Pagot. Uh, Shoutout din kay The Shot dyan, Elvin dyan, uh, yung teammate ko na nagtiwala sa akin, um, ano pa ba, yun lang. Maraming salamat. Congratulations, Nico Panganiban, our best player of the game from Jensen Warriors. And this is brought to you by OK Bet, the official partner of the MPBL with OK Bet on the win. Mix and heavy. Thank you, Sheila. Nico Panganiban, 23 okay. years old, getting comparisons to Scotty Thompson from his teammates and coaches, coming alive and now establishing himself as one of the rising stars here in the MPBL. On Friday, we will be in Sarangani for the first time this season. Bacolod versus Muntinlupa and then the Marlins defending their home court against the Quezon City MG Cars. The next day, Sarangani will go up against Bacolod but before that, it's QC versus Muntinlupa. Patuloy po ang Bisman invasion of your MPBL. After that, we even have Zabuanga before our All-Star Day and of course, our MPBL playoffs. We thank you for joining us here in Jensen. In behalf of my partner, Javi Palanya, our courtside reporter, Sheila Salaysay, my name is Migs Gomez, at ito po ang Maharlika Pilipinas Basketball League, ang Liga ng Bawat Pilipino.